right? So this is the brief introduction about uh, myself. And uh, as uh, uh, Professor Sanjeev Kumar has uh, uh, given us uh, the broader picture about uh, the outline of the program and all, OK? So this is what uh, is going to be our agenda, I hope. And we are going to learn uh, the Python programming, right? And we are going to have an introduction about our environment as well. I'm going to, you know, uh, take you through uh, right from the basics of how to install the software and all. Okay. Then we'll slowly move into the statistical analysis, data mining, supervised and unsupervised learning, machine learning techniques, text mining, NLP. We're going to use the Tableau for data visualization purposes, and there will be forecasting. So that's the overall and brief agenda topics which we are going to cover. Right. So in the beginning, uh, I I, uh, I mean, uh, all of you are from, I guess, uh, from engineering background. So you must be having an understanding of how to download uh, any of the software. Right. So it's not, uh, uh, you know, that hard to download. Uh, let's say we are going to use Anaconda for Python. Right. So this is what Anaconda is all about. So. Let's try to download a copy of Anaconda. So what all, all of you have to do is simply go to the website of www.anaconda.com. And on this page, you will find here there are a lot of tabs over here, OK, a lot of different options given over here out of which we are interested in the products, right? And that too for individual edition. So just select that individual edition option over there. And just go down at the back end of the page. And somewhere here, you will find there are Anaconda installers. right? So depending upon whatever operating system you are having in your laptop or computers or, I mean, desktop computers, Right. Based on these operating systems, you can choose any of the links, okay, based on your configuration also. Okay, so if you have 32 bit uh, system, then you can go for this link. 64 bit, you can go for this link. That to for Windows operating system. Make sure that before going for the links, you please select it first, okay, and uh, then you can download the installer. Once you download the installer, Based on your downloading path, it will be downloaded in your system. Right? So something like uh, mm, this is for our studio. And OK, I might have deleted that. OK, so one can download that installers or let me download it right away. So my is 32 bit system. So I'm downloading this. Okay, into my download folder. Now once it is downloaded, it's going to take three, four, five minutes maybe. Okay, once it is downloaded, it will be appearing in your download folders. You simply have to double click on that particular file so let it download complete okay anyway it is downloading but then uh, once the file is being downloaded into your system just double click it and like an uh, normal software installer uh, installer will appear in front of you and you simply have to follow the instructions given page wise or let it happen i will show you actually i did not see it earlier that the installer is deleted over here just give me two minutes it's being downloaded
Till then, if you have any questions, you can ask. Any any question. No matter whether the topic has been covered yet or not, you can at least, you know, have some sort of discussion. And by then, let me also tell you about how to download R Studio also. And please make sure, guys, you are you know uh, making your notes. So all the steps explained over here, though the video recording is available, uh, I will just give you some tips that how I have learned uh, this data science. You know, so right from the day one, I started you know uh, creating my own notes, whatever format you may wish to have it whether it is using pen or paper, whether it is using your own system, okay, whether you use Word file or whether you use Excel file. Okay, I will show you how I used to, when I was learning, how I used to keep my notes, create my notes. So this is my Excel working. So this file is, I'm going to use this file throughout the course because there are a lot of things I have noted down for every topic which I have learned as a beginner okay and it's a huge subject data science is a huge subject you know it's it's like a seed so you can't memorize all the things okay so you have to keep uh, you are this thing uh, you are uh, notes so you have to keep preparing your notes okay so these are some of the data sets i have prepared to explain you guys but then there are some examples but then this is how i used to write down whenever i learn new things see this is a keyword file okay so or this is something from qq line or this is from hypothesis or this is from hypothesis this is example then how anova and data mining okay so what are the different terminologies used in data mining etc we are going to go through all these things i'm just because it is downloading I'm just showing you how to, how you can prepare your notes, and whenever you prepare your notes, because it is written in your own language, it is easy for you to understand, right? So even if I share this file with you, you won't be able to understand it because I have written this or I have created this file as per my understanding and as per my uh, upbringing, right? So every person has or is at different level of understanding okay so this is how you can prepare your notes or if someone is comfortable with your pen and paper or notebook please always try to put down whatever you are not understanding something like you know these people have asked the question over here that what is eda which is good asking these questions is good but then sometimes it happens that, that maybe in the discussion uh, one of the question may get unanswered and the person who has asked it may also forget to re-ask okay so if you put it down in your notebook at least whenever the next session next time you get an opportunity you can ask the same question or at least you can you know research on that particular word okay so something like someone has asked what is eda which is exploratory data analysis okay so this is something like likelihood these are the words pca these are the words these are the technical words right so we all always have to put it down in white and black in our notebook so that uh, it is going to help you uh, in a very long run, OK? Uh, and uh, because it is a research field, OK? So you must be very good in writing queries over here, OK? It is a search engine, right? So you're going to learn so many different different terminologies concepts uh, the different programming techniques different packages different tools different modules different words used for same techniques okay so there are a lot of things to learn but i'm sure that hardly a person can you know memorize everything and 
if if you ask me i will give you uh, i mean uh, this is how i put it you know never try to memorize anything okay we are in the world we are living in a world or we are uh, in a society nowadays or even though it is a competitive world okay the the learning mechanism has changed right so earlier it was was something like what is uh, what was the uh, length of the nile river or what is the height of a himalaya you have to memorize things the person who used to have uh, you know a good memory and who can uh, you know keep the data in the mind and give the answers something like on the tip of the tongue used to be called as a brilliant person okay now the scenario is exactly different you don't have to memorize anything okay but you have to be master in this okay the better you are in your query writing okay the fast you will be learning new things and new technologies and the smarter you will be right so our this thing the installer has been downloaded okay so i am opening that installer you can see it must be here somewhere So you will get this installer like this, Anaconda 3, 20, 20, something like this, this file. Just double click on this file, okay? And then it will open up. Look at me. Actually, I have already clicked. I don't know why it has not started. So let me double click it again. It is taking time. Okay, so this kind of window will appear. You simply have to say run over here. I'm not running this uh, installation because the software is already installed in my machine. Okay, so once the installation is complete, you will find that folder over here, something like this Anaconda 3 or maybe Anaconda 4, maybe Anaconda 2, okay, whatever you download, it will appear over here. And these are the various options. You may find a couple of options only because this is used and launched thing available also over here, okay. So once it is downloaded, you simply have to say, go to Anaconda Navigator. And there are a lot of IDs like Jupiter is there, okay, Spider is there, and there are so many different IDs are there. What I specially used always, and it is easy to understand for beginners, that is Spider. So we are going to work on work in this particular ID. Irrespective of whatever ID you will use, whether it is uh, Jupiter or uh, Spider or PyCharm or whatever, the code remains same. Only the environment changes. Okay, so whatever code you are writing in Jupiter, you can use the same line of code in Spider. The result will be same. Only the environment will be different. So by the time Anaconda gets open up, let me see if there are any questions. Okay, there are no questions. Okay, there are a lot of questions actually. Okay, my voice is not clear, is it? Is it from uh, everyone? No, it's totally fine, sir. It's totally fine. 
So are we going to consider Seaborn, Matplot, Lib? Yes, 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 of course. Then, sir, I am using PyCharm installed. My machine uh, connector not supporting. Okay. So I am completely new to ongoing concept. Uh, is there any prerequisites that I should cover before these sessions? Absolutely not. Who is the person? Sumit uh, Prasher. Absolutely no requirement. See, irrespective of any background you are coming from, whether you are uh, coming from a civil background or electronics background or computer background or pharmacy background or uh, maybe uh, transportation background, logistic background, commerce background, okay, uh, whether you are a CA chartered accountant, whether you are a company secretary, whether you are an insurance advisor, whether you are selling mutual funds, okay, irrespective of your background, whether you are from agriculture, Irrespective of your background, this course is designed for each and every person. Okay, and there is absolutely no need of you know uh, the prior uh, prior background of anything or any prerequisite. The only thing is that you must be able to understand uh, the basic mathematics. I mean, whatever we have learned uh, till our standard maybe tenth or twelfth, and up till then whatever statistics we have learned, something like probability and all. Okay. So that is uh, required over here, okay. And that actually, you know, uh, probability is something which maybe some of you guys have forgotten, or maybe some of, uh, if, if all of you are students, then you might have just, uh, you know, learned it a few years back. But when I deliver lectures, there are people coming from, uh, you know, uh, different backgrounds, uh, having work experience 20, 25 years, 15 years, and absolutely, you know, lost, touch with uh, this uh, mathematical calculations and statistical understanding and everything okay so uh, for them also i tell that you know the most important thing which we are going to use in this analytical world is the probability okay and this actually we use day in day out now how many of us are watching the television uh, i mean watching the cricket match on a television okay and how many of you just just try to ask the question this question to yourself how many of you are uh, you know when when uh, someone is oh, virat kohli is batting or maybe some uh, other player is batting and maybe we are needing some 50 odd runs in 67 balls how many of you are calculating how many runs required per ball and uh, how many are of you are called calculating the number actually it is all given the information given on the screen but still we indians normally are so much habitual you know to calculate all these statistics and uh, probabilities every day and now okay all all day along we are uh, calculating the things and these are the basic things which is required over here to understand uh, you know uh, the analysis well, the, to understand the, the data properly and uh, after watching the data to understand or to come up with the insights okay this sort of things i mean these are the basic level things which are required okay so don't worry if you don't have any knowledge about it or if you don't have any prerequisite there is no prerequisite actually nothing like it but if you are completely new, I will make your journey very smooth. Don't worry about it. Right. So once you open this Anagota Navigator, okay, it is a used software, so it takes time. And my system is quite, you know, uh, it's not that. Uh, what you can say, the resources are less over here. Nowadays, you guys may be having the top level computers or laptops. Okay. So you might open in this one in your computer, uh, maybe in fraction of seconds. Okay. So uh, this is what the environment look like for Anaconda Navigator. These are various, uh, you know, uh, IDs and, and softwares available with the Navigator, right? Even our studio is available. So here you simply have to go and say, if you want to use Jupyter, you can launch Jupyter from here. Or if you are going to use Spider, you simply say launch over here. So once you say launch, okay then the spider will open up and the option which is not available here okay will start showing 
and then you can simply launch it launch spider okay once you launch it the environment will open up like this okay and this is the ide for spider okay in spider we can use the python language we can script the python coding over here and whatever code we have written or whatever script we have written once we execute it okay it will be executed in this console window over here you can see over here this is a console window okay there are different types of layouts available okay there is spider default layout matplot matlab uh, layout r studio layout vertical split horizontal split okay so this particular split is a horizontal split which i am using right now but you can use different layouts as well right and this is ipython console segment okay this is file explorer okay so it uh, it, it gives you your um, uh, you know uh, the information from your drives whatever the files are stored at what location etc if you want any help you can go to use this tab okay this is what a variable explorer is about so whatever variables i am declaring okay so let me clear this when you open it for the first time, it will the the all, all the segments, all the panes. These are called panes, right? P A N S panes. So all these things will be blank, right? So let me clear this out. So whatever variables we are declaring over here, okay, can be visible in this particular tab, and there is history log as well. Okay, so these are various tabs. So mostly you will be using this IPython console and this variable explorer tab. Okay, these are the two tabs which will be used regularly. And if suppose sometimes this is not happening now, you can see over here, if this is not going because I have opened it almost after 20 days as I was home quarantine. I did not use uh, my computer for last 20 days and that is why at times it will show something like this. But then you can change your kernel as well, okay, by using these settings options. So let me wait for some time so that this, these things will be deleted. Or I can remove it, remove them one by one as well. Okay, all, all, all things have gone over here. Okay, my IPython console can be cleared. So to clear the screen, we use Control L over here in Python. Control L is for clearing the screen, right? And this is the entire environment wherein you can see there are various options. Something like uh, we always use this Microsoft product. Okay, so these are the options given over here. Okay, out of which also we are going to use very few of them uh, as a, a beginner to Python. Okay, and slowly when you start using it regularly for different projects, maybe in three months or six months time, you will find uh, this all these options very handy and you will be comfortable with them. Okay, it's all about uh, what you can say. It's all about practice, nothing else. Right. So this is how the installation will be done for using python so up till now any questions guys let me check completely new ongoing concept okay so there's a lot of words related to data going around it's kind of confusing and overwhelming so you can make it clear what exactly we should be looking for and what kind of opportunity should be should be prepared for um, yeah actually i mean this has become a buzzword okay so everybody is talking about data science machine learning artificial intelligence uh, neural nets or you know there are so many different terminologies uh, coming in actually these are uh, various techniques deep learning these are technologies okay uh, at the base of it the fundamentals of the at the base of it is nothing but is machine learning if your machine learning concept are clear if you really understand machine learning very well then 
you know climbing these ladders becomes like a cake walk but if your machine learning concepts is is not clear good enough or is not okay or is you 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 are still confused about what is machine learning how it is happening okay unless you clear this please don't think about deep learning or artificial intelligence or the higher level topics okay so we will learn them topic by topic slowly i will uh, you know move to the uh, uh, complexity uh, uh, increasing complexity of the uh, topics as we go ahead right and as far as opportunities are concerned there are a lot of opportunities let me tell you uh, so many people ask me about this that they are coming from this background so is this opportunity uh, is there any opportunity for them or not just keep in your mind you know the bottom line is wherever the data is being generated at that place the opportunity is there now if you think which is such space where the data is not getting generated i will show you one slide just to clear some basic doubts from your mind yeah i will be covering some example related to finance yes sql sql actually you know who is that uh, saklani okay uh, so uh, you know sql is of course there are a lot of uh, back end products available like hadoop is there sql is there then uh, you can use excel also you can use uh, i mean there are a lot of uh, rdb rdb based systems as well okay so any of the background uh, you can use but you know these backgrounds or backends where the data is actually being stored okay even in cloud computing actually you are connecting to the to, through the server to the server just to collect the data that's it that much part is important to learn when it comes to uh, you know data science and if you are uh really want to do some analysis by using the python and all okay so that much knowledge about sql is uh, important because uh, there are a lot of different backends so you don't know in which backend your client is storing the data so probably your client is storing it on uh, uh, google server or probably your client is storing it on amazon web services or maybe it is storing it in its own uh, office where there is a physical server available and is storing the data over there and uh, in that also uh, some clients may use hadoop some clients may use uh, sql some clients may use microsoft access or some clients may use some other uh, back end uh, product okay so as far as the connectivity between python and that product that much knowledge is important and i believe that is uh, not more than maybe 8 to 10 lines of code that's it nothing else and as far as sql is concerned or any uh, back end tool for that matter they are uh, you know uh, people can get the specialization in that uh, particular topic itself okay so, so you may find there is a person who is completely working on only sql okay he don't know anything about python he don't know anything about data science he don't know anything about uh, uh, this machine learning and all but he is a champion of sql okay you may find someone is champion of oracle right but that is not our subject uh, to discuss okay we are discussing data science with python okay in which we definitely need to have an understanding how to get or establish a connection between an back end okay because python being a front end okay so you need to establish the connection and just extract the data to work on that okay so can you tell about jupiter spider and new to this well yes so spider is one uh, environment or id jupiter is something like you know this your uh, web page okay or uh, it's it's you can open it in a browser basically jupiter you can jupiter notebook 
you can open it in a browser and you can type in the same line of code which we are going to type in in spider okay so the code remains same only the you know tomorrow you may find abc sort of a id which uses python okay so you simply have to learn where to put the code and how to extract the output or how to execute the output that's it because the code is going to be same because the language is language whether you use it in africa or whether you use it in india if you, if you want to use hindi language or if you want to use english language it is going to be same all over right anaconda is same like python no no anaconda is a navigator uh, you can say aggregator okay so anaconda is having as i show you show you that there are multiple softwares available so it has aggregated all these softwares at one places at one place okay and then from there you can use uh, any software uh, of your choice right so something like uh, we have uh, this uh, app downloading uh, app so it is also an app right so google play is not google pay what is that that app uh, let me check in my mobile what is the name of that app it is uh, play store so play store is in app itself so play store is nothing like uh, an anaconda where you get all the apps so it is something like it is an aggregator of all the softwares okay but open source softwares of course open source software okay it shouldn't make any difference uh, if we use pycharm right yeah 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 absolutely not uh, what's what is the difference between machine learning and data analytics okay so machine learning is a technology wherein just, just give me a minute and got some messages okay so machine learning is a technology where in we write a program or an application okay through which you are telling your machine so this is a machine learning app okay so, so when you press over here and if you are saying something okay then this particular app or this particular technique is using machine learning over here but the application is an example of artificial intelligence okay and what is the other term you used data analytics so analytics is nothing but when you have some data with you let's say this is your data this is the data right now you are going to so if suppose let's say you are having 1500 columns like this and maybe 10000 rows okay all these rows and columns are filled up with the information like this right now when it comes to analytics you are going to analyze this data by using machine learning algorithm okay so when the big data comes into the picture for example if i want to use the excel sheet over here for over this 10000 records i can still use some of the techniques like filtering the data sorting the data searching the data something like this okay but when it comes to a huge data and a different if the data is stored in a different formats then you need some algorithms okay those algorithms those technologies those functionalities are called as machine learning algorithms this is the difference between data analytics and machine learning so to do the data analytics you use machine learning algorithms basically right sir i am from public health epidemiology okay background please consider that point also and try to cover example okay yes definitely play store yeah okay so i think i have answered all these uh, your questions now let's get back to our anaconda our spider environment over here okay and in this environment we will try to learn or we i, I, I would i would rather say we will try to play with python so my file name itself is a play playing with python basics python right so we are going to learn some basics of python okay 
but not in a sequential manner because again rule number 1 in data science machine learning deep learning artificial intelligence okay this this industry is such where there is actually no sequence okay so any topic you can learn first okay of course after after completing the fundamentals okay so similarly here in python also you can you know just go randomly and learn it just have a fun with it i am going to share this file with you after executing it in our session in this uh, classroom okay so any time you want to write your own new file you can simply go here and say new file okay and start writing your script or if you have any written script available you can do all this copy paste etc all these things we can do right so here this particular file i have just randomly created from the point of view that any layman person can understand this and the person who is actually really not having any programming background i want to learn any programming language not considered that he should be from engineering background and have learned maybe c c++ visual basic and something like this okay so this is particularly for all people right so now, now let us get started with understanding of or playing with python right so when it comes to a programming language there are so many different thousands of different programming languages available every language is having their own set of rules and language is a language like hindi is a language marathi is a language english france french portuguese or uh, maybe uh, japanese chinese these are all different different languages and all languages are having some set of rules to which we call at times as uh, punctuations okay so these punctuations are nothing but syntaxes in computer languages right so we have to follow or it is mandatory to follow these syntaxes while writing the code in any of the computer language and python being the open source language so what is the open source and not open source so all these microsoft related products are not open source products the operating system uh, microsoft is not a open source microsoft operating system linux is a open source microsoft uh, linux is a open source operating system similarly this python is a language which is open source c is language okay which is not open sourced okay so you need to follow the strict rules given by the developers of that particular language wherein in python or in r programming which are open source anybody can download it freely anybody can access them freely anybody can use any of these pack, uh, any of the packages required over here to uh, attain your goal or fulfill your objective okay so anyone can freely download it and anyone can access the functionalities available with those packages and modules freely that is why they are called as open source okay and there are many communities there are many programmers by using the basic set of rules which we call syntaxes they write the programs they write their own packages and they are also making these packages publicly available so any one of you suppose you want to use the functionalities available in those packages or modules can simply you know access these packages download them import them for your session of the program and uh, start enjoying those functionalities in your programs right so we are going to see all these 
important packages which are required for data science and machine learning because again as i said that data science is a huge 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 topic in that python is the one of the small tool which we use to do all this programming and all related stuff right and within python there are so many different different modules and packages out of which very few are required for data science and machine learning and a very famous one will be like pandas numpy scikit-learn matplotlib or uh, you can say uh, regular expression re right pborn so these are all the modules or packages each of these package is having some functionalities like seaborn and matplotlib will be carrying visualization techniques Pandas will be basically used for data frames, or you can say where the label data is available. If I want to do any manipulation within that data, what is label data? So this is the label data. This is the example of a label data because this data is labeled as name. This data is labeled as salary. This data is labeled as number of bottles. Now, if this number of bottles I change to, let's say, rupees, then now the same information belongs to rupees now. It has become 2 rupees, 3 rupees, 4 rupees, and 5 rupees. Earlier it was 2 number of bottles, 3 number of bottles, 4 number of bottles, and 5 number of bottles. Right. So the insight is completely new over here. And that is why there is a lot of importance given to the labels. Labels are very important. Right. So whenever we have such label data available, we can use pandas. These are called data frames, actually. This is nothing but one data frame. Right. So we can use those pandas packages, package, uh, functionalities available in pandas package for data frame related activities. We can use NumPy, numerical pi. NumPy is nothing but numerical pi. How, how do you write it? So it is something like this. So this is pandas, this is NumPy. Okay, so these are modules name. So NumPy is having all the numerical arithmetic related operations or calculations or functionalities within it. So whenever I want to use any mathematical operation on the data, I can call NumPy as well. Similarly, there are packages like, as I said, matplotlib or pborn. Okay, so this is matplotlib.pyplot. Okay, or we can have seaborn right so these are various packages which we can use like scikit learn mostly will be used for model writing like linear regression logistic regression okay or maybe some of the classification techniques okay we we can call uh, these algorithms which are there in scikit learn okay so different packages will be having different functionalities and to use these functionalities for our own benefit to solve our business problem, we have to import all these packages and then we can be able to use the functionalities. Now let's, as I said, uh, there are some set of rules. So the number one rule in Python and very important one is that indexing over here starts with zero, right? So what is index? So as we say, we normally have serial numbers, okay? Something like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that, right? So suppose you are using R language, R programming language, then the index start with one. 
in case of python it always starts with zero right so that is the rule number 1 now let's try to play around so i am i am using a variable over here what is variable it is that object you can say wherein i am storing some information which can vary which can change right so name is my way like we always say put uh, x equal to 5 so what is x x is a variable because currently i am using x equal to 5 maybe in tomorrow's example i may use x equal to 7 okay so name is carrying this information name is a variable and it is carrying this information which is a string because it is given in double inverted commas and i am saying awesome me full stop space how are you so this information will be stored in the variable now you can see over here once i executed to execute i have used this black button okay so any time i am using using the single line execution i will go through this once my code is completely established okay i may run the entire file by using this right but till my code is not complete i will go one by one so once i executed it you can see the result has been appeared in the console and in the variable explorer a variable called name has been created and the value it is storing in itself is this and the size of this value is 1 and the type of this data is string similarly i can store some other numbers or other information let's say in a equal to 5 b equal to 7 means a is having this and this b is having this now if i want to play a plus b then i will get an answer 12 this is the basic of it it's like a calculator okay we can do some basic calculations like this as well okay so a variable can be added into a variable if having the similar data type right i can store this value well into another variable called c right so you can see here c is carrying this value and all these are integers integers are nothing but the numbers right so if i want to see the type of name you can see it is a string right and if you type down if you write down type of Let's say C. Then it is integer. So what is the length of the name? So what is the length of this value? Means how many characters are there in this particular name variable? Okay, so I can use the length function over here. L E N. So this is the beauty of Python. Basically, Python is a simple English language. okay so len means nothing but length and uh, while going forward you will see okay there will be very simple examples i mean the function names also very simple sub means substitute Re replace itself is a function ends with is nothing but how the sentence is ending with by which letter okay append adding extend extending removing so these is these are simple english words we can use because whatever the functionality is these developers have developed they have given very easy names something like any layman can understand right so if i say a length of name you will get 23 okay if you count it from here then you will find including this full stop space and all the letters okay the count will be 
23. If I want to convert everything into lowercase from this name, I will simply say name dot lower. So whatever value name is carrying, like this value, okay, all these capital A, capital H, capital M, capital A, capital U, oh, sorry, Y, will be converted into lower cases. Okay. Similarly, I can capitalize also. So I can convert it into lower case. I can capitalize also. So lower is one function. Capitalize is one, one function. And my request to all of you that as because we are just starting, just keep a note on a single uh, on a separate page that how many functions we are learning day by day. Okay. So you can write down the first function you have learned was type, second was length, third was lower, fourth is capitalized. And this is how please make a list of it. And if you have time to narrate about what this function does, that will be fantastic for you to refer it back. Right? So as I can use this capitalized function on a variable, you can see here only the first letter become capitalized and all rest of the letters are small. I can use these functionalities either on variable because it is carrying the information within or I can use it directly on the information or the data. So if suppose this is my data, which is a string, I can use the function over it. I can also convert everything into capital case, uppercase. Okay. If I want to access any element, any letter from this particular string, then I will use the indexing over here. So when I say name, square bracket 3 is nothing but I am trying to access the third index later from this data. So what can be the third index later? This is 0. This is 1 because indexing starts with 0 in Python. right? So this is 0. This is 1. This is 2. And this is 3. So it's going to be S. So the output should be S over here. Right? And here in Python, we can also have the negative indexing. So what do you mean by negative indexing? You started from the end of the sentence. Started from the last. Okay? So this small u is nothing but minus one, one index. This O is having minus 2 index. This Y is capital Y is having minus 3 index. Okay. So I'm printing over here name minus 6 means minus 6 index later will be printed from the data. Right. Okay. Till now, any questions? Let me check. Okay, this I have answered. Answered. For linear equation functionality, what package is used? We will see. Okay. We will see one by one, topic by topic. Okay. Right now, we are discussing. Uh, the name is Angana Pal. Okay. Angana. Currently, we are discussing about basics of Python. Okay. Once we uh, get into the linear regression topic, we will see what are the packages how the code will be written, what sort of business problems can be solved, when to use linear regression, etc., etc. All these questions will be answered once we touch upon that particular topic. Any other question? Okay. You can keep posting your questions, okay, in between whenever I get some time or I, I, I keep on checking in between. Okay, what is the next one? Can you explain the reverse indexing again? Yes, sure, I will explain. 
so why in name the result was in double quotes and later on the result was in single quotes what is the difference nothing there is no difference actually you can use single quotes over here as well so if i say now name is in blank or i would say okay let me use the single quotes and here i am saying name 1 because it is a different variable and this is a single quote so if i create a name 1 you can see both are having the same information Okay, so there is no difference between single quote and double quote, actually, and that is why when it is giving me, so if I print this one now, name one, this one also give me in single quote, and if I print name, this one also will give me in single quotes. Okay, so there is no difference. And what was the other question over there? Reverse indexing. Okay. so the reverse indexing indexing is like this is your data okay so when you start indexing from left then it starts with zero so capital a is zero w is 1 e is 2 s is 3 4 5 6 and like this you will go okay but if you want to use it in the reverse way then this will become minus 1 Minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. So suppose this same S, if I want to print by using re uh, reverse indexing, then it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty-eight. Okay. So here, if you use Minus three and minus twenty. Oh, sorry, three and twenty. Then the output will be same. Got it now? Ah, huh, what will be the result in console for minus four indexing? Once I share the file with you. okay you can try with minus 1 minus 2 minus anything okay if we keep on checking each and every uh, single this thing then it will be very time consuming but let me check it for you as because this is the first time you are asking so let us check for minus 4 so it is a blank over there right so it is minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and it is a space over there is it okay yes definitely you will get same outputs over there as i said the code and the language is same for any id you use obviously the output will be also same okay all right so let's continue so here now we are having we are trying to store a digit by converting it into the string into a variable called a right so a is having nine number which is having a string data type right so can i multiply A by four. So what I am asking over here is, my A is carrying a string information. Can I apply the mathematical calculation on a string, whether it is a number or a letter? Let's see what happens. So you have got four different nines. Okay. So this nine has been repeated for four times. Right, because it is a string. Had it been a number, uh, yeah, a integer, 
it could have given us the mathematical output that is 7 pose are 28 right so you can convert this numerical information into strings like this similarly you can if you want to try to convert this string information into integer okay is it possible no it will throw an error Okay, you cannot convert a string or a letter into an integer, right? But if I want to convert the variable which is having the information string 9 into an integer and store it in A, then I can do it. Okay, you can see here the A has become integer now, right? And don't worry, guys, I'm going to share this file so you can try whatever permutation combinations you want to check with this particular thing. Okay. Now, let us see some examples of adding the strings. Okay. So, like we add 2 plus 3 plus 4, you get some, you, you perform some mathematical operation and you get some addition output right over there. Whereas here, what I'm trying is, I'm trying to add the letters or the words. Okay, so if I use this, then I will get the output like this. It has converted into one single sentence. Right? So again, if irrespective of it is double quotes or single quotes, the output will be same. There is some more, one more function called replace. Okay, so we all know the information stored in name. Now from this information or this value, okay, I want to replace every E with T so that I can use the replace function. And you can see every E has been replaced with the T. Right. But these are called some of the basic functionalities which comes with default. Okay, so as we have learned, type is a function, len is a function, capitalize is a function, or string is a function, replace is a function. So all these functions are called as default functions of Python. Okay, but there are some functionalities which are available in modules or packages right so regular expression is one of the module or package like pandas or numpy or scikit-learn or matplotlib right regular expression is one of the package now here one thing to be understandable uh, understood over here is a package or a module whatever you call it you have to download it at least once. If it is, if, if it has not downloaded in your system with the installation, then you have to download it in, with the manual process. So how to download a required package or module? You can go over here into your Anaconda folder and simply open the Anaconda prompt over here, right? So this is my base path where my Anaconda is stored. Here, I can use this particular command, pip install, or pip install, and the package name. So suppose I want to use, I want to, uh, install numpy package over here okay then i will write pip install numpy or if i want to download pandas then i will say pip install pandas and similar to any package if i want to download i will simply use pip install and the package name now if i say enter over here 
it is saying requirement already satisfied why because i am using numpy package quite regularly for last so many years and that is why it has been downloaded in my system okay so any time if i come to know now the another question will be how we will know that which functionality is available in which package and for that i told you earlier also you must be good in this okay by using this you can find out that which package is having that particular functionality and then if suppose that package or module is not installed in your system then you can download it by using this method of pip install in anaconda prompt this is one way of installing the package or one can also go over here in anaconda navigator okay go to the environment tab search for the uninstalled package or not installed packages so these are the packages are not installed in my machine look at that how many packages are there which are not installed in my machine because they are not used up till date by me or maybe after the use if they are very rare to be used again then i might have uninstall them because unnecessary occupying the space is not good okay so this is another rule when when you are coming into data science industry use your data or give value to your data and please use the space intelligently give the justification for which you are downloading any package or any data there should be some purpose okay otherwise it will just become a mess in your system and you simply don't understand where which file you have stored where okay that should not be the case so here also you can go and you can see so you can search any of the package name which you want to download let's say if you if the package starts with h name h u l i'm just trying something okay so the package name contains h u l is this let's say simply select it over here and once you select you can see here the apply button is there once you say apply it will be downloaded right this is how we can this is another way of downloading the package and there are different ways there are more different ways available okay slowly you will learn all of them all right there are some questions space is also calculated in counting index yes space is also counted calculated counted okay how can i open console in spider you don't have to open actually it comes by default okay or you can simply use okay you can say restart kernel or open ipython console you can simply use this option okay go to the settings over here and open an ipython console you can say or you must find some some option over here also okay so there are consoles you can see over here okay from here also you can open the console window okay any more questions difference between package and libraries they are both same they are the names are interchangeably used okay there is not difference as such packages also um, contains functions libraries also contains function library is mostly used in uh, r studio or r programming language okay packages is the terminology also used in r programming language and for python actually the technical term is modules okay so be it module be it package or be it library they are all same 
or you may say that a package can have different libraries that is also possible so i am literally not understand up to then what i am do i mean literally not understand up to means you have not understood uh, understood anything kalwa up till now okay what is that thing you have not understood or there is a possibility you know with some students it happens that maybe they are trying to think too much or they are they are trying to think or there is something going in their uh, in the background of their mind and they are trying to you know uh, expect some answers of those questions and while while thinking on that front they actually don't focus on what is going on in front of them and that may be the reason <laughs> that you are not understanding anything right now but i am very much sure that once the session is over once you get the link of this recorded video just go through this session once again and you will i am sure that you will uh, you know get some sense about it I don't know anything about Linux. I do use Windows, so I prefer Windows. Last twenty twenty two years, I'm using Windows. I'm happy with it, right? And Python is uh, working good on Windows as well. So I really don't know. I don't have any experience about OS and uh, I mean that Mac and uh, Linux. But yes, for Windows, it is doing fantastic job as of now for me. since last few years <coughs> all right let's continue so i am importing this uh, re <coughs> so once the package is downloaded once the module is downloaded in your system okay for uh, every time when you want to use the functionalities available in that particular module or package you have to import that module okay so you simply say import regular expression or you will say import numpy or you will say import pandas or you will say import matplotlib okay so once you import that now you can start using the functionalities available within that particular module so let's say i want to use this substitute function which is available in regular expression okay so the syntax will be use substitute function from regular expression on this data and do this action that is nothing but in this data substitute all these things all these things with a dot that is the meaning of this sentence okay so from capital a to capital z small a to small z whatever you find in this data okay replace all those letters with a dot and you can see the output over there right if you want to take a help on any function okay simply give the path of that function that is from which package it is which module it is and the function name in the help function and you will get the entire documentation about that particular function okay so this is the documentation for substitute function okay and you can read okay for more details of any functions which we are learning over here okay if you want to get into the deeper level of that particular function you can use the help command or help function okay and go to the documentation and read all the things then you will understand that what what is the capacity of that particular function right if i want to do exactly reverse of this then i will simply use the cap symbol over here okay and rest of the things is similar so the meaning of this sentence is or this code line is except this 
except is replace everything with a dot. So exactly opposite of this particular result. Okay. So except letters, I just want letters from this particular data. Okay. All the special characters, numbers, spaces should be replaced by dots. Right. Now, what is the name? Information in the name, the value in the name is this one. I'm using the substitute function on the value available in name. And I'm saying that wherever you find capital A, small e, small s, replace this elements or this letters with x. Not replace, substitute. So again, this function names are what you can say interchangeably we can use or call these functionalities okay so substitute is substituting capital a small e and s within this by small x and here i'm saying that wherever you find out small o and small m in continuation in this name variable replace it with x or substitute it with x now what is the difference between this and this so this is called list okay and this is called string so in this result you see if you keenly observe that only when the O and M are in continuation, then only it has replaced with X. This O has not replaced, this O has not replaced. Whereas in this case, any single letter out of these three, if you find, you replace. Right? So this is the functionality of regular expression. Now, I have used the substitution from regular expression. I can use the replace as we have used earlier, okay, which is the default function of Python. So, name dot replace m with double f. So, wherever you find m, replace it with double f. All right, now I'm changing the value. If suppose my value of name is this awesome feeling, okay, so this value has changed over here, awesome feeling. I can use ends with function just to check whether my string is ending with G or not. So ends with is one of the functions. So wherever it is appropriate to be utilized, okay, you can use it to get the Boolean value. Okay. So uh, we are just trying to, as, as I said, the file name is playing. We are just trying to understand the outline or the possibilities available in Python. Okay applications where to use these functionalities and all we are going to see one by one as and when they are required in live case studies right okay so substitute we have seen already so let me check before getting into the list let me check if there are any questions okay no questions okay there are some all the applications that are showing in Anaconda Navigator are the part of Python or they are some other tools associated with Python for the development. No, 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 no. Python is separately mentioned, not all the applications, but I will show you. Now, for example, Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, okay, IPython console or spider these are the applications which are you know connected with python there is r studio also this is entirely a different language altogether okay so these are different ides over here you can use any of these okay and you can use this code over there any more questions are dot sir can you Explain it once again, okay? In re dot so, if re stands for no, 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 regular expressions. I have said re stands for regular expression. This is a module name. It is called regular expression. 
Hari stands for regular expression. This is a name of the package or a module. So in that module, substitute function is available. So let's say, suppose I have a folder over here. Now I'm having this my data science ML AI DL folder. Now within this folder, I'm having a subfolder. Within this folder, I may have another folder. Okay. So if I want to reach to a particular functionality, so let's say over here. Okay. You see here data science. Suppose this is my package name. This is my the folder inside this package. This is another folder inside this particular pack, uh, folder. And this is my function. Okay. So to use that function, I will use this path. Okay, so re dot sub dot something dot something can be possible. Clear? What is that? Dr. Monica, is it clear? Okay, Angana Pal. Re dot sub, can you explain? So So this, you are actually substituting these letters wherever they are available in this string in the data. Right. So if suppose you are having name as a variable which is carrying this information or this information, you can use a variable also over here or you can directly give the data over here. In this data, this function is going to search for these letters Wherever it is finding these letters, it is going to replace it with dot, or it is going to substitute it with dots. Okay, and if I use the cap symbol with the same set of uh, what you can say search objects or search letters, okay, so it is going to search other than this information in this data. And wherever it is finding other than this, it is going to replace, it is going to substitute it with dot. Is it clear? Angana? Angana, sorry, Angana Pal. All right. Now let's move ahead to list. Okay. So list, list, list is nothing but you can have multiple elements. You see, you, you have seen that A can store only integer values, name can store only string values because these are the data types of these variables. Now, once the lists are come into the picture, list can contain multiple data types okay so i can have string i can have numbers i can have any other thing float values or any other thing right so if suppose this is my list of elements x is my list of elements this is the list of elements if i want to append this list i will i will use the append function append is nothing but adding an element into the list so you can see here if i print text now 2018 has been appended in the earlier list if i append it with this now this is a string okay so my x will be appended with that particular word so if i want to append this list within list with a list, okay. So this entire list will be considered as an element, one element, single element, and it will be added into the list. So my list become this. So you see now, my list is carrying not only numbers, it is also carrying the string or the character information. It is also carrying another list within it, okay. That is why list is a very strong object. Now, there is a subtle difference between this append function and extend function. 
both of them are adding but the way they are adding the element or the information into the list is different if i use x dot extend with another list 14 comma 15 okay then that 14 and 15 will be added as a separate element into the list so there is a difference between append and extend function right so append has appended with the entire list like this whereas extend has broken down that list into different elements and added it into the original list if i want to remove any element from this x list there are two functions available one is pop and one is remove when i say pop of head okay so from the list of x pop head means remove the eighth element in the list now this is my zero -th element this is my first element second third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth so 2018 is my eighth element that is the index so pop function takes index value over here okay so that number index whatever value is available in that particular list will be deleted okay and this is what the output is this is my new list where 2018 is not available or not present if i want to use the remove function okay then it takes the actual value which value i want to remove okay so now in this list eight is the value which is available in this list okay it is not the index number it is the value okay so if i say remove of eight then it is going to remove the number eight clear any questions okay so x is my this list one two three four y is a b c and a is two three four so i have declared three lists now x is one two three four y is a b c and a is two three four now if i add this x and a that is one two three four and a b c then what will happen if i want to store it in b then this is how the addition will be done 1 2 3 4 plus 2 3 4 right so this is these are the values in x these are the values in a and if i say x plus a plus b then what will happen or oh, not b y okay so different elements have got merged in one particular list and this is called concatenation of the list that is adding one list into another list to create the third list right now let us see some of the sorting examples so how to sort the data so we all know what the sorting means arranging in the order right so if suppose this is my new list to which i am calling it as x and if i want to sort this x okay then that x has become this now because it has sorted from least value to the maximum value i can even use reverse equal to true as a parameter to pass on in the sort function so if I am using the sort as a function, 
and if i say the parameter should be reverse equal to true so how to know what type of parameters the sort function takes simple again i can go to the help function just give this x dot sort to it and it will give me the documentation and then we will see that what different parameters a sort function can take okay so if i say reverse equal to true then it has been sorted in a reverse on uh, reverse order right now let us try to create any questions till now guys difference between append and extend difference between pop and remove function so what is the question i have already explained now what is the difference between append and extend so this is the difference you can see here when i have appended the list it has taken the list as an element within it but when i extended it has taken it as different elements you see here when i have appended it with 12 and 13 it has taken as a complete list when i say extend it has broken this list into different elements which are there that is 14 and 15 are the elements of the list okay it has broken the list and taken it separately that is what extension is about and this is what appending is all about and pop is using the index number whereas remove uses the value in the list is it clear i think i have uh, just at the beginning only told you guys that, that you don't have to memorize anything you can simply use this one here in the session what you have to do is you simply have to focus on the explanation part whatever i am explaining over here if you want to note down anything any function name or any important information you can prepare your own notes and later on when you are revisiting this video okay if you want to search upon those particular things you can simply go over here and go for the detailed information okay because again and again i am saying that it is a huge 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 industry it is a huge 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 technology and there are so many different words and technologies and terminologies functions and parameters right which no one on planet earth even the developer of the python even the owner of the python who has started this language or who has you know started working on python as a project to create the language even he don't know how many functions are available in the python or he can't memorize it no one on the earth can memorize it. and no need of memorizing anything okay to begin with these small simple functions you can start preparing your notes slowly you will understand that you know there are better mechanisms or there are better ways because person to person it varies okay different people have different capacities and abilities and skills to uh, what you can say uh, to gather the information or to collect the information or to use the information okay after that what is there what is the true function actually meant for what is true function where is true function i don't know what is true function why x dot sort reverse equal to true not why if suppose i want to 
sort it in a reverse way i will use it i am just showing you that there are these options available that you can sort it in a reverse order if suppose i want to sort it in a reverse order if i don't want to sort it even i don't use the sort function so there is no question like why over there yeah yeah you can use remove to string also python is case sensitive yes very good question python is a case sensitive language okay all clear so let's be interactive guys if if uh, if i am answering your questions kindly please you know acknowledge it so that i can understand that you are through with your question or i am i have answered your question okay thank you okay let's move ahead so we have seen sorting now let us see suppose i want to create a list from a particular range let's say i want to create a list of uh, the numbers from uh, 500 to 1000 or 100 to 200 or zero to something okay if i want to use that if, if i want to generate a list by using the program then i can simply use it like this okay i'm saying list of range 50 so what is range 50 so this is called inner function okay range 50 is inner function this is outer function so always like we all know that multiplication dividedion plus and minus happens in that order right similarly the inner function will be executed first after that the outer function after that the outer function after that the outer function okay so let us see the result of this range so when i say range of 50 means it is 0 and 50 that is the range between 0 and 50 and when i say i want to have a list from 0 to 50 okay this is what the output i will get that is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 up to 49 okay last digit it does not consider because it is starting with zero so it has generated 50 numbers including zero right so when i say list of range of 50 store it in x so x is having these numbers now so this is my list okay this is my list of x now if i want to access the index number 3 value from x then it is going to be 3 because this is first this is second uh, this is first this is second this is third and this is fourth but this is zero at index this is first index this is second index this is third index so i am talking about the third index value which is nothing but the three now i am using another list over here with different numbers so this is this is going to be my x and if i want to insert so insert is another function if i want to insert let's say 1000 as an element or uh, as an value within this particular list okay at this index location okay so index location is one which is nothing but this one so here i want to insert 1000 as a value in the list of x okay you can see over here now if i want to sort again in a reverse order so this is just a repeated this one because this this is a huge i mean the larger list and the earlier one okay you can see here when i say reverse equal to true means the highest number will come first and the lowest will be so it is descending order right and there is a function called reverse as well so to achieve this okay 
I can also have the direct function called reverse. So I can either use sort reverse equal to true, or I can directly use reverse function as well. So if I use x dot reverse, okay, the list will be reversed over here. Okay, so earlier values were this. I mean the storing style, and now it has been like this because I have reversed it. So this is another function, right? Again, I can append. So the person who has not understood it last time now try to concentrate over here how append and extend works. Those who have not understood append and extend, okay? So now this is my x. Okay, I want to append this x with e, y, and e letters. So what happened over here? You see, because e, y, and e is another list, it has considered as list within list as an element, right? If the same thing. If I use it with extend function, and if I use the same data again, then this is the output. You can see over here, this element, it has taken the complete list as it is. When I use it append function, and when I use extend function, it has broken down that list into different different elements. This is the difference between append and extend. So can I sort these particular x values now? Now it has given me the error. Why? Because the list is not having the integer data now. Okay, and letters you cannot sort. The string values you cannot sort. So if you want to apply the sort function, you can apply only on numerical data. Right? Again, same examples given over here. Append, extend, 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 append. Okay. So you can. This is this is for your trial purpose. You can try it, try it out when I share this file with you. All right. Any questions? Cascading list. Where is cascading list? Have I used it now? Jashu Manani. Okay. So please ask the questions which I am using. Uh, I mean, as far as the uh, this thing is concerned, because others may get confused. Okay. Some of you might have learned it, uh, you know, some basic things by reading or somewhere else because of out of your interest. Okay, so once I cover that particular topic, please ask about it. Otherwise, just hold on with with you, right? Okay. So let us see some conditional statements over here. Let us see some conditional statements. So, if and else is one of the popular one conditional statement. So what is conditional statement? It is nothing but you are trying to take any action if a particular condition is going to hap happen or happening or true. Something like if suppose there are clouds. Then while going out, I will carry an umbrella. Something like, if suppose tomorrow the stock market is going to up, or maybe for next quarter the market is going to show the positive trends, I'm going to invest. So there are some conditions. If this is going to happen, or if if, if this is going to be true. Or if this is going to be false, 
which means indirectly I'm saying if this is going to happen, then only I'm going to do this thing. Okay. So here we are saying if not three is greater than four, then print yes, which means if three is not greater than four, then print yes. If three is greater than four, then don't don't do anything, right? So it is printed yes because three is not greater than four. If I remove this not over here, then my condition becomes if three is greater than four, print yes. So it is not going to perform anything, right? Because the condition has not satisfied. Satisfied. So whenever this condition is satisfied, it is going to take an action. Now let's say, for example, over here, PQR is equal to 100, and we are checking the conditions that whether PQ, PQR is less than 3, is less than 5, is less than 6, is less than 7. If it is less than 3, then print A. If it is less than 5, then print B. If it is less than 6, then print C. If it is less than 7, then print D. If none of these condition is satisfied, then you will go for else. Do this. Right? So, let me execute this conditional statement. So it has executed none because PQR is not less than 3, 5, 6, 7, right? This is another conditional statement. This is another conditional statement which we are going to see. So I hope everyone is familiar with modulus operator. If not, I will simply explain it. So this symbol is called as the modulus operator, the percent symbol. The meaning of this is if 3 is, if 12 is divisible by 3, completely divisible by 3, then the remainder will be 0. If 12 is not completely divisible by any number, then there will be some remainder. Right? So when we are writing this one, we are saying that if 12 is completely divisible by 3, whatever remainder value will be there, if it is matching with 0, then the condition is satisfied over here. And here in this case, we are checking another condition by using the AND operator. Okay, so there are two operators, one is AND and one is OR. So AND means this condition and this condition both has to be true this condition and this condition both has to be true right so here 12 divided by 3 remainder is 0 this condition is satisfied 12 divided by 5 remainder is not matching with 0 so this condition is not satisfied right so if one of the condition is not satisfied while using the and operator then it will go to this it will check the next condition if it is satisfied then it is going to take the action if it is not satisfying then it will go and check the next condition if it is satisfying then it will take the action but whenever it takes the action first okay it is not going to check any other next conditions right so if i execute this one You will see it has printed second because the first condition is not satisfied. This this entire has to be satisfied. It is not satisfied. This one has satisfied and that is why it has printed second. And once it has printed it, it will not execute all these lines. It will come directly to this line. Right. Now let's say your x is having these values. 
Now we are using some loops over here. And the most popular loop is for loop. So I'm saying for i in x, which means i is going to take each value available in x for every iteration. So when it comes to loop, it is attached with iterations, right? So for i in x means I is going to capture each and every value with every iteration and we are going to check the conditions okay so first time the i is going to take the value from x that value is nothing but 23 okay so we are checking the conditions that whether the value available in i which is 23 for the first time first iteration if we divide it by 2 does the remainder matches with 0 if this condition is satisfied then take this action if this condition is not satisfied then do this take this action right so for i in x i am checking For i in x, it's going to give me this output. 23 is odd, 34 is even, 45 is odd, 22 is even, 11 is odd, and 10 is even. Is it clear? Up to line number 213, any questions? Sir, in input 11, 37, why there is two empty rows before the result? Yes. Okay. So, because I might have selected those many lines. Nothing else. This one. Insignificant. Okay. Don't, don't uh, give much importance to such things. All right, any more questions? Okay, uh, conditional statement I'm getting syntax error, unexpected end of file while parsing. Yes, maybe this indentation is wrong over here because you see over, over here, this and then exactly after a tab this if condition is there exactly after a tab this print is there okay so might be your syntax is not good uh, you know proper so check where the whether the syntax is proper check whether you have given this alone after each condition so these are the syntaxes so whenever you find such errors like syntax error value error Okay, just copy these things, just copy this one. And put it over here. See, remember, uh, today is your first session and I'm saying it to you on the first session itself. Right? After completion of this, I mean, not after completion of this, but definitely if you have if you have shown interest in this particular course, which means you are interested to be a data scientist, right? And what is the job of a scientist? The job of a scientist is to research, okay? To search it again and again, or to, you know, find out, to dig down, to come up with the information. What is mining? Why, why did you use the term data mining? Mining is nothing but what? Digging down the things, okay? So there is huge amount of data, but you are interested in only the specific amount of information from that huge amount of data. So what you have to do? You have to mine it. 
you have to remove all those which you don't want you simply have to focus on what you want okay and that is what the research field is all about right so many times while writing the codes and programs you may find some errors like this these are the basic errors but you may even get some complex errors going forward okay so any time you get such errors the simple thing to overcome on this is to use your search engine okay simply copy that error put it over here go through all the documentation whatever you find over here that is what the research work right yeah i have told you just now atul yeah okay so can you please tell four concept again okay i will tell i will explain four concept okay so in this particular segment i will explain it again okay. or you want me to explain this one okay so what is happening over here x is having these values okay x is having 23 34 45 22 11 and 10 these are the values x is having right now when i am writing the for loop over here i am saying for i i means it is a standard practice they write i you can write g you can write y you can write your name you can write any variable over here okay so for i in x the meaning of this is i is going to take the value from x that is nothing but in the first iteration of for loop i is having a value 23 in the second iteration of the for loop i will be having the value 34 in the third iteration of the i of for loop i is going to have the value of 45 and so on right so whenever i was having a 23 as a value stored in it from x we are going to check the condition whether that 23 if you divide it by 2 whatever remain over there is it matching with 0 so if you divide 23 by 2 the remainder is definitely not, not 0 which means the condition is not satisfied so it has gone over here and printed that 23 is odd now, in case of the second iteration, the value is 34 in i. So, 34 divided by 2, the remainder is 0, which is matching with 0. That is why this condition is satisfied over here, and the action will be taken is this. So, 34 is even, and so on for every iteration for all other numbers. Is that clear? Vivek, if in sorting examples, if in list we have single string, we have single string in numerical values, then will it function? I did not get your distinct question. Single string means? Who is that? Vandan Kumar Loda. What do you mean by single string? One dot two dot three name means no, did not still not got what is your question? In sorting, string the string cannot be sorted. That is for sure. Okay. So in sorting, if you see, where is that? Okay. In this particular example, we had x like this. Okay, and we have sorted it. 
Okay, so because all the numbers were there, the X has been sorted out. Right? In reverse order, because we have given reverse equal to true. But now when you append it with, let's say this one, E, Y, E, okay? Or let's say you extend it with E, Y, E, which means your X is having letters in it. Okay, so whenever you have, whether a single letter, double letter, a list, carrying the letters or anything, okay, you can sort that particular outer list. Is that clear? Yes, due to string value, numerical value will not be sorted. Due to string value, numerical value also will not be sorted. Yeah, any more questions, guys? Okay, welcome, Mandan Kumar. All right, so till now, we have sorted out between us okay so someone please note down this number 214 okay till this line of code we have covered in today's session right and tomorrow we will start from 200 and line number 215 is that okay any more questions All right, then I guess uh, let us stop over here for the day and we'll reconnect tomorrow right at five o'clock and we'll start our basics of Python again from line number 214 or 15, whatever it is. Okay, I thank you very much, all of you, for joining today's session. I appreciate your patience attending me. And I wish you a very good night. See you tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Thank you very much.